This week, we are continuing our series, Sitting at the Table, which Carl introduced for us last week. In partnership with David Fitch's book, Faithful Presence, we will explore together the way the church identifies Christ's presence among the many tables we frequent. This may seem easy or simple at first. We gather and sit at tables all the time. We know the power of an intentional presence around a shared meal. As Christians, we know to take Eucharist both in and out of liturgy because it attunes us to the presence of God. But in our fast-paced lives, in a society that measures us by what we produce, it is easy to be distracted from God and from one another. So much of our time with each other ends up being unintentional. As a result, we can default to what is comfortable and least disruptive. This unintentionality and pursuit of comfort leads us to see others as inconvenient. As a result, we naturally begin to gravitate towards people that we understand, people that think, look, and act like us. We choose to be informed by bias and prejudice. We create borders, reducing those who aren't on our side to the ideas of them we create in our mind. We turn our banquet tables into TV trays. This often happens in the church and leads to the false binary of the church versus the world. As Fitch puts it, it's the in here, out there problem or the sacred versus the secular, us versus them. These are tables that have no room for difference or nuance and create enemies and problems that are convenient for our own stories. When we divide ourselves to us versus them, we limit our understanding to where we think God can show up, where Christ is present, and where the Holy Spirit is weaving our stories together. We begin to deconstruct these harmful binaries and the us versus them mentality the more tables we sit at. This is why we need time at a shared table with people from different backgrounds and stories than ours. The table is, of course, not just the physical act of eating a meal together or a piece of wood that we gather around. It is an action that crosses borders, dispersing the power dynamics that separate us. The more tables we sit at, the more we realize how prevalent and interwoven the church is designed to be in our world. We realize that the church is everywhere we are faithfully present, not a singular gathering or location. The church is not to be separate from the outside world, but should bleed into every reality. In his book, Faithful Presence, Fitch presents a metaphor using different types of circles as a helpful tool to think through which tables the church should be present at. For me, these aren't so much tables, but roles we will dance through as we show up in different ways in different seasons. The first table is described as a close circle. And because I read this wrong quite a lot at first, I just want to emphasize that this is not a closed circle, but a close one. This is the circle that is not exclusive, but has a level of synergy and intimacy that allows for unity. This is when the church gathers together in worship and in love. This is a place where we all seek the presence of Christ with like-mindedness on equal footing. In the close circle, Jesus is the host. As we take the bread and cup at Jesus's table, we center ourselves on his incarnational presence, the embodiment of God's love. The love and closeness we experience in this space is what Jesus calls our greatest witness. Fitch describes the next table as the dotted circle. 
Jesus's presence by no means stays within the church or the close circle, because remember, the church is anywhere that we are faithfully present. The dotted circle is when we invite neighbors and strangers into the places where we dwell. When we invite the unfamiliar to belong with us in our familiar space. Here we, as followers of Jesus, are the host. We invite, usher, give, loan, welcome, feed, and extend. We become the visualization of the presence of Christ that is already there, beckoning us all. The last table Fitch presents is described as a half circle. In this space, the follower of Jesus is no longer the host, but the guest. We become the recipients of the hospitality of our neighbors and strangers and allow them to tend to us. We learn receive, are fed, rest, and listen. We bring with us Christ's presence as we break bread that was served to us instead of given by us. At this table, we bear witness to the brokenness and parts that need liberation. However, since the image of God is in all humanity, we must also bear witness to their goodness. Here, we remember that we are not messiahs and saviors, but grateful to those who are willing to host us. We can experience liberation when we all have a chance to give and receive. When we take time to identify these spaces, we can avoid becoming a church that retreats into itself. We avoid aligning ourselves with power for self-preservation, instead tending to the needs of those who are outside of our communities. We become banquet tables, not TV trays. When we are faithfully present in each of these spaces, the close, dotted, and half circles, each table becomes Eucharistic in nature. Each meal becomes an act of mutual submission. Each meal becomes a border crossing that creates new social and power dynamics. Like Jesus washing the feet of the disciples at the Passover table, these Eucharistic tables allows the presence of Christ to redefine the way authority is exercised. The person with the most power must submit first. Mutual submission happens when we release the need to grab power and give what we have and receive what we need. Together, we become financially, financially and tangibly reliable for one another. This is the culture of Christ's table where we all are both hosts and guests. Welcome to Christ's table. So we're gonna ask, I'm going to ask us a question that perhaps you have been asking yourself as I have. What is the Eucharist? Why do we do it every week and why is it important? So for me, honestly, the Eucharist is a challenge. And like many other Christian practices, it has, for me at least, become a symbol and a ritual more than a felt holy presence or movement. But we are going to reframe for my sake and your sake and all of our sakes, I'm going to attempt to reframe the Eucharist for a little bit. So let's reframe the Eucharist as a training ground. And let's reframe the Eucharist as our chance every week to recognize the power and the presence of Jesus around his own table. After all, if I don't recognize Jesus, at Jesus's own table, how am I supposed to recognize him at other tables? So here's one other way to reframe. If you, by chance, have read a single page of any self-help book from the last 20 years, you perhaps have heard of affirmations. Uh, gurus across the years swear by this practice of repeating positive statements to yourself 
on a daily basis. My bank account is growing. I am deliberate and afraid of nothing. My mind is full of brilliance. Affirmations are a little awkward and uncomfortable <laughs> uh, because immediately when you say it to yourself and you don't believe it, it's the cognitive dissonance immediately grabs on and starts squealing. It's not true. Why am I saying it? What's the point? And in a way, the Eucharist is also an affirmation. It can be very uncomfortable and awkward as we take the bread and the cup and feel nothing. And it makes you wonder why we keep doing it and why you are repeating what you don't believe when that won't make it true. But making a habit of repeating the truth, it trains our minds to look for the evidence that it just might be. And in a moment in our lives when something is going right and the path clears and we reach a goal and our hearts are so light and full of joy, Perhaps instead of bypassing it or attributing it to something unknown, our hearts just might whisper until we are one. And in order to identify tables to bring Christ to, I believe we must first identify at the table of Christ. And so here are some affirmations that I'm bringing to us uh, to Christ's table and to the Eucharist today. I belong at the table of Christ. I feel the Holy Spirit moving. I am becoming more like Jesus. Whew. So after identifying with Jesus, how can we now identify with our community? Like Megan said, the church is anywhere that we are faithfully present. And the best places to bring our presence to often comes through these immediate circles, like our family, our friends, work, school, hobbies and third spaces things places that we frequent such as coffee shops co-working spaces bookstores and i invite you now to jot down a few of those categories and identify a few of the people and places that you know that you have relational influence i will pause for a second here So having grown up in church, all of these categories, family, friends, hobbies, school, all centered around one worldview and even one building for a lot of my life. And it's really only, I can only claim actually five years of my life where my immediate circles um, were not tied all tied to the paradigm of Christianity. Knowing this uh, about myself, uh, it made me wonder for us in this community, how many of our tables are hosted by people in our own tradition? How many tables are we sitting at with people who don't think or sound like us? And how can we find and sit at tables where we are able to hear, honor, listen to, and love people that we do not agree with? I also invite you to take up your pen or phone app thing to name a few places where you know that you can challenge yourself to make relationships with people outside of your tradition and belief system. Relationships aren't a Christian ritual that we are beholden to. 
but genuinely why we are here on this earth to love while we are alive is there any higher calling so i call us now family to make the banquet table of christ a reality So you have just heard uh, an excerpt from me and Marissa, um, two different perspectives explaining um, how we as the church show up to the different spaces and tables in our community. Um, and all of these ideas are great, uh, but practically speaking, it's sometimes hard to think through what that looks like, especially for our community here at FOS that is largely in a digital and virtual space. Um, the idea of coming together at a, a shared table um, is kind of abstract. Uh, so Merce and I wanted to just take a moment to answer a question um, of what does Christ's presence mean on a practical level in a world where we are not often sitting around a physical table with physical food together? I, I think it's one, this is a question we have to ask, especially because our world, I think, the, the digital and virtual world isn't going anywhere. Um, this is, it'd be great if we could always be together all the time, but realistically um, it's something, this is a part of our lives that we're going to have to embrace. Um, and I think that for people who struggle with like social anxiety and who are introverted, this is actually kind of, sometimes it feels like a moot question because often um, the ways that we can feel most seen or heard is actually in online spaces mm. and physical places become really hard for us to show up. Mm. Um, so I think in a way it almost makes our table very expansive, um, but it, it, it comes um, with all of us choosing to commit to also be genuine and authentic online. Yeah. The danger with being online all the time is that you can curate um, people's perceptions of you really well. So um, well. And when you do that, I think you are placing obstacles for the table becoming real. But if we commit to being vulnerable, even in online spaces, in, in safe ways, of course, with um, healthy boundaries, um, I think a virtual table can feel just as real mm -hmm. as a physical one. I have a hard time with this because I do think that it is possible to be authentic and to be genuine in online spaces, but it's also just so much more difficult. It's just like, there's no yeah. like natural ways to include like, facts about yourself in discussions and it's just like at the end of the day it feels like we know more just like facts about e about our ideas than like the actual person mm. themselves one way that i felt able to know others in an online space is when I'm able to understand more of where they're coming from and um, in forms of like Instagram stories and our like little after parties where we get mm -hmm. to see like little snippets of people's surroundings and um, what influences them. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I think those are really important ways of, of connection, which is not always accessible to everyone. Yeah, that's good. I think the important thing is whether it's online or whether it's virtual or physical, um, the important thing that the ingredient that's needed is, is that real life, that, yeah. that piece of who you truly are. Yeah. Um, and so if you're constant, whether you're in a physical space or virtual place, you're able to either lean in um, to that, that time or the people that you're with, with your true self, your full self, mm -hmm. um, or you lean into people's expectations of you mm -hmm. or who you think you're supposed to be. That's good. Um, so I think in, in both spaces, we have the ability to, to hide ourselves. Yeah. 
Um, and the way that we can make the table feel real, whether physical or virtual, is by um, choosing to, to be who it is we actually are. Choosing to be courageous enough to show up to those spaces as our full selves. Yeah. Um, and that will have risk, whether you're with someone physically or yeah. you're online, it will have risk. Um, yeah. But the payoff of that is a table where we can truly be faithfully present to one another. I think Bose in particular has given me um, a wonderful opportunity to try to explore my faith and practice my mm -hmm. faith without um, needing to hide my doubts or my suspicions or frustrations and fears. Um, so I can show up and say, I can't do this today, um, yeah. or I don't. I don't know if I have that form of hope or faith today, mm. um, but I want to be committed to the space because I believe that the potential for hope or faith is mm. there. Mm. Um, so I think being able to show up with all the grayness of that has yeah. been um, super helpful for me in ways that I have not been able to experience in a physical faith community or space. How about you? Love it. Hmm. I mean, honestly, I feel like in the little random sarcastic side chats <laughs> is where I've been able to show up and also see others show up mm. the most like authentically. Yeah. Um I think my my love language is people laughing at my jokes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um <laughs> being able to laugh with other people and um yeah you know seeing seeing little like laughy emojis in the corners like it, it has been an important element of of showing up and also like seeing others yeah that's awesome well that has been uh the marissa and megan show uh please click here to like and subscribe um, but hopefully we'll be able to discuss this further as a community. So we'll see you guys on the other side. Thank you.